A new and somewhat ambiguous document signed by Pope Francis allows for blessings over practicing homosexual couples that seems to be a reaction to the formal blessings being given out by Catholic priests in Germany. As many in the Catholic community scramble to explain how the document isn't actually heretical. And Coco Melon comes out with a new skit of two gay dads dressing their little boy in a tutu. Stay with us as we look at these and other stories on the 511 News. Welcome back to the 511 News. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, we're going to be looking at what has been going on coming out of the Vatican as well as Coco Melon. Yes, Coco Melon, the little kids show and what sort of indoctrination they are now pushing through this avenue. But before we get into that, we would love if you feel so led to subscribe to the Good Fight Ministries YouTube channel as well as like this video. And if you are listening via podcast, make sure to leave a five star review. We want to thank so many of you for becoming subscribers as we just recently hit 200,000 subscribers on this channel. What an absolute blessing to have that many people subscribing and wanting to see the videos on here and hopefully they will continue to be a blessing to you as we look through what's going on in the culture, bring it captive to the obedience of Christ and share the gospel with those listeners who may not yet know the Lord Jesus Christ just yet. So, with all of that, yes, I would say, and I have sat down as well as I'm going to be having Pastor Joe on with me later and watched a number of different Catholic apologists or just political commentaries talking about this recent document, the Fiducia Supplicants, and what it is, what it really is coming out of the Vatican expressing these blessings. Now, don't get me wrong. There are plenty of, I guess, news outlets that are going to run with it and say, look, they, the Catholic Church is now formally, uh, formally allowing for gay marriage and so forth. And we want to try to take what the truth of what is being expressed and also look at what the ramifications and the fruit of this document actually are with those who practice it. And as we've pointed out, and not just us, I mean, you could look and see that Pope Francis has been a gay icon for quite a while. In fact, as soon as he was made Pope prior to Pope Benedict even dying, when he stepped down, Pope Francis now, it seems, has been a gay icon, even being featured on the front cover of Advocate magazine and so forth. And it seems to be that the fruit over and over again has come out that he is a progressive pope. And in fact, this new document, interestingly enough, uh, I was reading on Twitter about some of the Catholic priests and some of the views of how they feel about this new document that's come out. And one of them wrote this, quote, Cardinal Muller writes that fiducia supplicans was a declaration that was, quote, neither discussed nor approved by the General Assembly of Cardinals and the bishops of the dicastery. I don't recall during my lifetime any previous pope unilaterally imposing his will by completely disregarding the guardrails upon legitimate papal authority. The dangers here is obvious. The church and the deposit of faith is reduced to the level of the personal playground of whoever is the reigning pontiff. No doubt the nature of papal authority will be a topic for the next conclave, but in the meantime, how to stop the wrecking ball. Now, I'm going to say this uh, outright. This is the kind of nonsense you get when you give authority that is only supposed to be upon the Lord Jesus Christ and upon his word that he has deposited to us through the word of God, not the words of man. And you continually, this wouldn't be if after this pope, another gets elected and then basically proclaims that Pope Francis was really an apostate, an anti-pope. Ultimately, this is what you get because these are feeble men, not to mention built on the foundation of a false church known as the Roman Catholic Church. I don't believe it's Catholic because it's not universal. 
uh, the the word has been hijacked here, but because of the colloquial terminology, we should use it in that sense so that everyone knows what we're actually talking about. But yes, this is exactly what happens when a man is given the authority of Christ that has not been bestowed upon him. And I, I want to read a little bit from the document because listening to apologists, one thing they will say is, oh, well, no one's reading from the document. They have no idea what they're talking about. And you can actually see USA Today did an article. So if you want to see the practice of what is being put out by the Vatican, and I'll read right from their own website. But if you want to see the practice, just look at, quote unquote, Father Martin blessing two gay men in his church. But here is the ambiguous nature of this document that has come out. And here is chapter 31. And you can listen to it yourself so you can understand like how... If you are, I guess, more on the conservative side, you can say, oh, we're just blessing them because we want to reach them for the gospel, which is typically the trope that I've heard over and over again from every Catholic apologist from the shows that I've watched. But then you can also see how guys like Father Martin, who has other pictures that have been exposed of him with an absolute vodka bottle behind him that is literally made of a rainbow that goes hand in hand together, I guess. But here is what the document actually says, quote, blessings of couples in irregular situations and of couples of the same sex. Irregular, you know, we typically like to call that sinful, but we'll keep going. Chapter 31, within the horizon outlined here appears the possibility of blessings for couples in irregular situations and for couples of the same sex, the form of which should not be fixed ritually by ecclesial authorities to avoid producing confusion with the blessing proper to the sacrament of marriage. In such cases, a blessing may be imparted that not only has an ascending value, but also involves the invocation of a blessing that descends from God upon those who, recognizing themselves to be destitute and in need of his help, do not claim a legitimation of their own status, but who beg that all that is true, good, and humanly valid in their lives and their relationships be enriched, healed, and elevated by the presence of the Holy Spirit. These forms of blessings express a supplication that God may grant those aids that come from the impulses of the Spirit, what classical theology calls actual grace so that the human relationships may mature and grow in fidelity to the gospel. Just a pause real quick before I finish the last sentence. It is impossible for a homosexual relationship to mature and grow in fidelity without repentance. Just got to point that out that they may be freed from their imperfections and frailties and that they may express themselves in the ever-increasing dimension of the divine love. There is no divine love in a homosexual relationship. The only thing that is there is rabid affront against the nature of God, against the will of God, against the word of God, and against everything that God has stated and set up as a plan, not irregular, this irregular idea. It's one thing to say it's irregular because somebody, maybe a spouse, passes away. It's another to call an irregular situation, maybe what irregular a mistress, uh, what irregular two men or two women to bless this. It's, it's positively disgusting. And to read through this and think, oh, yeah, well, we want to bless them. And I've heard the Catholic apologists, and I want to have Pastor Joe on for a lot of this show because this is something that people need to understand. It is not an attack on someone to share with them the truth that what they are doing is only bringing about death. What they are doing is only going to hurt them in the long run, especially when we consider the long run to be eternal. And when you have somebody patting someone on the back, I believe that 1 Corinthians could just be put in instead of this and would rebuke that entire chapter. Absolutely rebuke it because they are being accepted and given a blessing and a part of the church to get receive this blessing according to 
what is going on here. Just absolutely sick. And before I bring Pastor Joe on, I, I want to get to the other part of this because it is interconnected uh, in, in some ways. And I, I want you to understand this because if you walk into a restaurant, just do this. Let's say you walk into a restaurant with your family and you see some kids with some iPads or some screens out. I'm going to argue that Many of those screens that might be out, one, I don't think they should be, but that's for a whole nother episode. But if you look at those iPads, there's probably going to be Cocoa Melon on it, sadly enough. And it is the most redundant nonsense to just get kids away from actually interacting and talking with their children or, or with their parents and actually just looking at a screen. And then when we look at that, what we see over and over again I mean, I, I, at least there's a mother and a father. But now, of course, with Netflix, they're going to be pushing an agenda like they always are. And you have to see the clip of the new episode for Coco Melon. How about you break out those moves for your two biggest fans? If you're not sure what to choose, think about all the things you like to do. Just be you. Just be me. I mean, you have to look at that and see how sick it is to have two men having a little boy dress in a tutu. And sadly enough, this comes right after the time where a lot of people are wondering about what's going on. Obviously, you had Dave Rubin there adopting twin boys. You had Shane Dawson recently bragging about adopting boys. And you have a lot of homosexual men adopting little boys. And then you have a little kids show at the same time coming out where they're dressing their little boy in a tutu. I mean, this is sick stuff, guys. And to think, oh, well, you know, I don't even know what Coco Melon is. 169 million, that's with an M, subscribers. Oh, okay, that's a lot of subscribers. How about the fact that they have multiple videos on YouTube, Coco Melon's YouTube channel, with over 5 billion, with a B, not an M, billion views. I mean, the impact... And you have this, of course, pushing it on little children, going gay, be what you want to be, you know, just do whatever's in your heart, all this nonsense. And, you know, Joe, I'm going to bring you back on for this one. We're going to bring on Pastor Joe, because when I see this, you see the Cocomelon stuff, you see the Catholic Church, you see, obviously with Pope Francis, all of this stuff going on, it, it is just a full frontal attack on how God has created us, and it is a heartbreaking thing to watch. Yeah, we're seeing the unraveling of the building blocks of society. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church is supposedly, you know, represents Christianity. <coughs> it does for so many people. It's not a true expression of Christianity because you have all these traditions that have been, and Jesus warned about those who teach uh, the, you know, the, the doctors of men as the commandments of God. And he warned about people's traditions, even in his day in the first century, how the Jewish traditions were nullifying the word of God. And of course, the Bible warns, uh, last days, people have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof uh, in the last days, Second Timothy chapter 3. So we're seeing again the traditions of men in the form of Christianity, uh, where these traditions have nullified the word of God. And the Pope's uh, declaration, uh, Francis, is, and we've seen this coming, we didn't know and, you know, how it would exactly uh, be articulated, but he has been considered as, you brought up earlier, Chad, he's like the gay icon, uh, you know, front page of, you know, front cover of The Advocate, as you mentioned, and so forth. Uh, but now he's putting some teeth in what we've been hearing about all along. And now you have many priests running out there that are liberal, and, and now they're like, wow, we've got permission from the Pope to bless these gay relationships. And this is considered the face of Christianity by so many people, and what's what's amazing about this is you can bless all these I mean, Chad, as a pastor, if if a gay couple came into the fellowship where I pastor and asked me, Hey, we want to get married, you know, will you marry us? Uh, well, right immediately I would, you know, have compassion on them. I feel like, man, these guys don't even know the Lord. Uh, obviously, uh, they don't know what marriage even is. And I would be open to sitting down with them to explain the scriptures to them and the truth of God's word. And of course, I'd say, uh, you know, I can't marry you guys because, you know, you guys are made, you know, two males or two females. But I, expect, I express the gospel to them 
But if they said, but if they said hey, but can you at least bless our relationship? Uh, what would I be doing, Chad, effectively if I said, yeah, I can't marry you because it's unbiblical, but you know what? Uh, I will uh, bless your relationship. So let me pray that God just, in the way, you know, you had read right from that chapter 31 there, which it's sick when you read that because Holy Spirit's mentioned over and over again as though somehow Holy Spirit is quantifying this blessing in a gay relationship. And someone like Trent Horn and other uh, supposed, you know, Catholic apologists, they're supposed to be, and I say supposed in the sense that they're supposed to be conservative. Uh, they're actually trying to, you know, as you as you alluded to, whitewash the whole thing. And it's like, man, when you read that language there, he's talking about blessing their relationships, you know, these gay relationships. So if I turn, what would you think of me, brothers and sisters, if I was like, yeah, I'm going to pray that the God just blesses your relationship together and that you guys have harmony and beauty and, and it's just a sweet relationship. That would be reprehensible. That would grieve the Holy Spirit of God. I would become apostate at that point uh, if I began to do that. And the Roman Catholic Church has been apostate from, you know, almost pretty much like day one, but they've, their, their, their doctors have multiplied and become more and more evil. But now, Chad, I would be damning those people. I wouldn't be loving them. That couple that came in, they need to hear the gospel. They need to hear that you need to repent and turn to Christ. Uh, and then God will reorientate your sexuality. Uh, but for me to basically bless them would be basically saying to them that you can have a right relationship with God. And by the way, the Pope's saying, well, they're not, we're not recognizing their marriages. What you're doing is you're recognizing their fornication as though it's acceptable before God. I mean, how ludicrous is that? I mean, can't you see through that? Uh, so it's really, really heartbreaking. And and we need as Christians to stand up. And my heart and prayer is if you're a Roman Catholic right now, and hopefully this has pushed you over the edge. Hopefully you're like, you know what? Now I finally see it. I cannot. You need to quit excusing the Roman Catholic Church's apostasy because what you're doing, you're championing a an apostate movement over and above Jesus. What you need to do is put Jesus first. You need to put his word first. You need to say, hey, this is not, the Bible says they don't speak according to his word. It's because there's no light in them. And you need to reject Roman Catholicism. And hopefully for, Todd, this is my hope. Hopefully, and I believe this is going to happen. Many Roman Catholics will come out of Catholicism and they'll become true, genuine, blood-bought, born-again Christians who love the Word of God. You know, it's it's really interesting, and I've seen this shared from Protestants and Christians. There was a Catholic priest recently, and he's like, man, this generation, you know, oh, everyone's just going to heaven. And he said, where does it say that in the Bible? And I'm like, this is exactly right. We have to go back to the Bible. Amen. And when I'm reading this document, the entire time, I'm thinking, this is the same rebuke. I could just picture Paul writing, when reading 1 Corinthians chapter 5 specifically, but you're dealing, 1 Corinthians as a whole, you're dealing with a man sleeping with his father's wife, and he's like, well, you're accepting this. Oh, yeah, well, they're coming. You know, they're not being, this is just an irregular relationship yeah. that they have here, right? And we should still be putting blessings upon them. No, you should not. What you should be doing is not even eating with such a person who would claim to be a Christian and yet is walking in immorality, specifically in 1 Corinthians 5, sexual immorality is yeah. one of the things mentioned. And so you have a situation where rather than the rebuke, and here's the sad part, 1 Corinthians 5 comes right before 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 5, where it tells us not to eat with them, that is actually God's grace in the same way that Matthew chapter 18 yeah, is God's amen. grace in that excommunication of sending them out and treating them as a non-believer so that they are not recognized as a believer while they are on their way to hell. This is the saddest thing to me to watch. Yeah. And 1 Corinthians 6 is the, do you not know? Do you not know that homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God, but such were some of you yeah, is amen. what First Corinthians six eleven says. After not just homosexuals, obviously uh, multiple other sins as well. The unrepentant, and it breaks my heart because you see this. But Joe, I love what you said there because in the same way as as you said, and I've been you know a little bedridden uh, last few days, finally able to get out so we could do this show together, Joe. And one of the things you know reading this i'm like man i hope that some catholics are seeing the futility Amen. of putting their faith in a bishop i remember listening to catholics that had come out of protestantism usually you know low level you know high evangelical but not actually evangelical kind of movements where they weren't studying the word of god for what it really is and one of the things that i saw over and over again they would say well at least you'd hear the catholic apologist say well we have a bishop i could take you there you could meet him and it's like well, you want to go meet this guy? 
This is going to be your reference to why you believe it's true instead of standing upon the word of God, yeah. which is Theonustos, which is God breathe. breathe. You you stand upon just a bag of sticks here, uh, hay and 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 stuff that is going to be burnt away, and it it is it is really heartbreaking, Joe. And you know, I I think there's a great encouragement here, and I do think it's an opportunity for the gospel. Amen. Absolutely. And the Pope in Roman Catholicism, you know, Pope means Papa. You know, uh, Jesus said, "Call no man father," and he's talking about in the religious context, and that's exactly what Roman Catholicism does. I mean, they call him the Holy Father, even. And that's a term reserved for the Father in heaven in, in, in John chapter 17 in Jesus' high priestly prayer. Uh, so it's all reprehensible. And I, they, the, the Pope is supposed to be the vicar of Christ, you know, the one who represents Christ to the world. And it's such a lie. There's no Pope in the New Testament, you know. Uh, there's no, uh, but he called Papa in the New Testament as the head of the church. Uh, in fact, even Peter, uh, who many Catholics want to be the Pope, uh, was rebuked by the Apostle Paul in Galatians. Uh, and he said he called Peter hypocrite. And uh, it's important that our viewers understand that when you read Acts chapter 15, there's a, the church first church council, and Peter's there, and he's helping the apostles decide as to what the scriptures say, and, and the Holy Spirit indicates in scripture about circumcision, whether it's required among the Gentiles. But it's James, brother of our Lord Jesus Christ, who says, this is what I have decided, you know? And they write, the, they craft the letter together, but he's the pastor of the church there in Jerusalem where they're meeting, and it wasn't Peter, it was James, you know, who made that dis ultimate decision. Uh, Peter wasn't a pope. Peter, by the way, was married. Everybody pretty much knows that. Uh, popes can't be married. It's all been a lie from the beginning. Uh, and but the sad thing, though, Chad, is that we as scriptures, as Christians, need to be good Bereans. And we know in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, uh, Paul, uh, Luke tells us uh, that when Paul preached that uh, those in Berea were more noble than those of Thessalonica because they received with all readiness the, what the Word of God said and checked daily from the Scriptures to see if what Paul was saying was true. Uh, in Roman Catholicism, you're not supposed to be checking out the Pope, especially when he speaks ex cathedra and speaks with, you know, in terms of doctrine and so forth. You're supposed to just check your brain at the door and say whatever the church says, you know. That's not biblical, man. Be a Berean, man. Check out daily what the Scriptures say. Check out what Chad and I say to you and make sure it's scriptural because uh, when a man becomes... The, the, the center of your theology and he becomes the interpretive key, uh, you're already deceived. You're already de on a path of deception, man. Uh, the Bible says if they speak not according to word, the word, it's because there's no light in them. And Paul says, not to, we're not a, as those who adulterate the scriptures, not to go, he warns, do not go beyond the scripture. And Roman Catholicism, via the Pope right now, is going beyond the word of God and they're damning mass souls as a result of it. Amen. I, I, I'm just... I get so sad thinking about my Catholic neighbors who yeah. still need the gospel, but I am blessed because I do believe they are some of the easier ones to start that conversation with. Yeah, um, amen. So, the, the, so don't waste this time of year as as well, and don't waste when the Pope does these things as a chance to share the gospel. And Joe, praise God, I had mentioned this earlier uh, on the show uh, before before you came on, but. Joe, we hit 200,000 subscribers on YouTube here, which is, I've had a number of people, by the way, be like, I figured you guys were going to be kicked off YouTube a long time ago, but <laughs> praise God, we're we're still on here. We're going to be on here as long as we possibly can, given the gospel as many times as we possibly can. Yeah, and praise the Lord. And we want to we want to uh, give another shout out and thanks to, uh, we praise you, praise the Lord for all of you guys out there. And and we have a lot of active members who really share our, our content and and uh, get it out, and we see all kinds of responses of people getting saved, people getting strengthened, eyes being opened. It's a daily occurrence around here to just rejoice in what God's doing through the channel. We have visitors constantly that come to the fellowship. There's not a Sunday that doesn't go by, it seems, where we don't have visitors from different states often and different places, sometimes countries. We just had a bunch of our live streamers from uh, even uh, different countries recently. And uh, we just appreciate you guys. Uh, we want to thank the Patreons and all you guys, any of you who have, are supporting this ministry. I want to encourage you as well because uh, a lot of people aren't aware, Chad, but I think it's really important that you're incredibly blessed when you give. And I know you're not giving to get, you know, you're giving because you want to get the word out and you want to support this ministry and see more people saved. That's a huge blessing. But I do want to say this because it's in scripture and Chad in first uh, or in Philippians chapter four, verse 17, Paul says, I seek the gift, a gift they were giving 
But he says not to get, but he says because the fruit, he wanted to see the fruit in their lives. And he talked about because of their giving, he said, it will be credited to your logon, your account. Uh, and that's a trip because supporting the ministry uh, would 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 increase their uh, their their heavenly bank account, which is kind of a trip to think. And I think it's beautiful because a lot of times people can't do what we're doing. They can't go to the front lines. They can't they can't do the ministry that we're doing because they're working full time, but their hearts are right with ours, and they support because and you become part of that ministry in that way. And I think that's huge, Chad. And for every New Testament principle, there's an Old Testament illustration. And in First Samuel chapter thirty, uh, David and his army goes out to to whoop up on the Amalekites, the wicked Amalekites who were uh, killing a bunch of the, the Jews, kind of like the Palestinians uh, or Hamas, I should say. Uh, and what happens is is 200 men stay back and they watch over the, the supplies, you know, and the bags and everything. And after the war, they come back, those who are at war with David come back and they have a bunch of booty. But David makes it very, very clear that the booty would be shared with those who stayed with the equipment, those who stayed with the bags, the 200 men that stayed back. And the point is this, is that whether you're on the front lines or whether you're out doing ministry or whether you're, you have a YouTube channel where you're leading people to Christ or whether you're in the in the back saying, hey, I've got to work full time, man, but I love this ministry and I'm just going to support it and I'm going to become a Patreon. It is, I believe, spiritually because of Philippians chapter four, verse 17 and many other scriptures that you will not lose your reward. It'll be credited to your account. So we just want to let you know we're very grateful for what you're doing because we're seeing souls saved. We also want to let you know that God is blessed in his heart and all that to say that shows that God's heart is incredibly blessed by those who support godly ministry. And there's not a whole lot of ministries that you can support these days uh, and feel good about it. And we believe this is the ministry you can do. So so we thank you for the new Patreons coming on and, and anybody that's been teetering almost there, you know, pray about it because uh, we could use more help. We thank everybody for helping us because we're reaching a lot of people but a lot of it's because of your support. Thank you guys. God bless you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching 511 News. You can check out some of the older episodes as well as the Good Fight Radio Show and videos we have right here on our YouTube channel. And this week's feature product is Sparky the Broken Mirror. You can check it out at sparkybook.com.